Sonia Reynolds. Today I'm just going to give you a little introduction to an Alphorn and I thought that would be kind of fun for you to see um, what it looks like before it gets put together. So it comes kind of like a nesting doll and I just pull apart the different section and those all those little pieces get put together. So they have kind of these tenons, these joints that go together. And then you just assemble them all and you get a nice 12 foot long Alphorn. Um, the Alphorn gets its shape from the trees they would cut them down from high up in the Alps. They would take the trees clear up where there was a lot of snowpack, where they would grow out of the sides of the mountains and then up. And so that's where you get that characteristic shape of the Alphorn. And traditionally they would cut them down to the length of two men. So which they've standardized into, like I said, these 12 feet that um, in, in Switzerland and in Europe, they play it in F sharp. In the States, we play it in F. So we have an interchangeable top piece. So my top section right here, I have two of, one's longer and one's shorter. So um, I can play an F sharp or an F. And you play it just like you would a bugle. Um, as you can tell from back here, I'm really into natural horns and um, anything of historic value to the modern French horn. So I've got lots of things you'll see like back here, like post horns and shell horns and shofar and bugles and all sorts of stuff that all kind of operate on the same principle that it is based off the natural harmonic series of the length of um, that tubing. So um, this length of tubing, like I mentioned before, is based in F. So I'm gonna be able to play all the harmonic series. So if you're not familiar with the harmonic series, it's basically the fundamental C and then an octave up C. And then you've got your G and then the next C. And then in this middle octave, you're, you've got thirds. So C, E, G, and then a false B, it's a B flat. It's like a flat B. And then in the higher octave, it's almost by step. So you've got C, D, E, sharp F, G, a, B flat, B, and C. Okay. And the changing of the pitch is all in the embouchure, the tongue position, airspeed, just like you would any other brass instrument. So there's no valves or rotors or even holes to adjust pitch. It's just all open harmonic series. So I thought I'd give you a little history of how I even got into Alphorn playing. It's kind of a random <laughs> little thing. Um, I'm a horn player. Well, a few years ago um, in the summer of 2016, um, I had just given a presentation at the International Horn Society Symposium in Ithaca, New York. And we were, we had just left this part, like literally walked out of the room from giving this presentation and I was just on cloud nine. And we started walking across this campus and I heard these Alphorns playing and we, um, I just gravitated towards it. Like my whole soul just went, I must be part of that. And very nerdy starstruck me just walked up to these two Alphorn players and I waited in between pieces and I, and they were holding their music. And I was like, can I, can I hold your music for you? Or <laughs> I just was a total nerd. And they, I'm sure rolled their eyes at me and I didn't notice. And they're like, sure. So I just stood there and held their music while they played. And I was so excited and got to watch the music while they were playing it and kind of get an idea of what they were doing. And um, then asked if Matt and I could play. And they said, sure. So they disinfected the mouthpieces and Matt and I got to play and I just fell in love with it. I, my whole being was like, this must be part of my life. So I got home, I fell in love with Alphorns. And so I started organizing these um, annual Utah Alphorn days and opened up to my studio and the Utah Horn Club. And, um, and I eventually bought one and started playing with Tony all over the state. I played Oktoberfest in St. George and the one up in Sundance every year, except this year, COVID. My great grandmother, great great grandmother, she um, grew up on a dairy farm outside of Barron and she and her sister would play Alphorn duets to each other off the different sides of the 
Valley, which is by the way, like the most typical scene in the whole world of Alphorn world is two um, milkmaids, they were milkmaids, and playing Alphorns to each other across the valley because the sound echoes. And, um, and they immigrated to the States. No wonder my whole soul is like, must play Alphorn. I, I love it, it just resonates with me. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you don't miss our future videos. If you liked what you saw today, be sure to head over to patreon.com backslash ladies reading society and choose the pledge level that's right for you. These videos that we make take a lot of time and effort and every little bit helps. Thank you so much and we'll see you on the next video.